Welcome to Star Wars Transmissions, I'm Dan. Who else is riding high after the release of Star Wars Visions? I sure as hell am. This animated anthology series, which comprises nine anime short films from seven Japanese animated studios, provides Star Wars fans with some truly incredible standalone stories. While these shorts don't adhere to the Star Wars canon, we do see familiar themes and concepts that we know and love about Star Wars, such as the Jedi, the Sith, the Force, the Empire, etc., but these stories are self-contained and shown through an anime lens. Season 1 of Visions packed a serious punch that left me floored by the end of it. So, I thought it'd be fun to share my episode rankings for Season 1 and discuss each of the 9 episodes of Star Wars Visions. Obviously, spoilers ahead for Season 1 of Star Wars Visions, so get them booty cheeks out of here if you don't want any spoilers. Now, before we dive into my rankings, let me preface this by saying there wasn't a single episode I didn't like. Some I enjoyed more than others, but I found something that I enjoyed in all 9 episodes episodes and found all of them to be very entertaining. With that out of the way, let's dive right in. Starting us off at number 9, I've got TOB1, which was produced by Sain Saru and is about the droid TOB1, also known as Toby, who works alongside a Jedi in hiding, eventually attracting attention from a Jedi hunter. I really enjoyed seeing Toby's daydreams about being a Jedi, and Toby's fight with the Jedi hunter was really fun, but the episode reminded me a lot of Pinocchio with a droid longing to be a real human Jedi. This episode episode really felt like it was geared towards a younger audience, especially with its comparison to Pinocchio, which is why I've got it at number 9. Moving on, at number 8, I've got Tatooine Rhapsody. Created by Studio Colorido, this rock opera is about a Jedi who escaped Order 66, is on the run, and who joins a band, and the band eventually has to perform for Jabba the Hutt to hopefully save their bandmate's life. Going into this episode, I didn't think I'd like it at all, but it was way more fun and enjoyable than I was expecting. The music was fun, and Boba Fett's appearance in it was great. I mean, it's always cool hearing Tamira Morrison's voice. Not too much else to say about this one, so next on the list, at number 7, I've got Sayan Saru's Akakiri, which is about a Jedi who helps an exiled princess attempt to reclaim her throne from his Sith sister. If not for the ending, I think this would have been lower on my list, but seeing the Jedi, Tsubaki, kill the princess just as his force vision foretold, and then join his Sith sister, Masago, to resurrect the princess was excellent. One of my favorite things in all of Star Wars is learning about the Sith and seeing the relationship between a Sith master and apprentice, so it was really dope to see a Jedi turn to the dark side and become a Sith apprentice. It immediately made me think of Anakin, Padme, Darth Sidious, and Revenge of the Sith. So freaking cool. Next up at number 6, The Twins, which was produced by Trigger and is about two twins born into the dark side. The episode is essentially a short story about dark side Luke and Leia from another universe. I absolutely love the character Am's armor which is so sinister looking and just screams evil in the dark side, and I also like that Kari's armor was very reminiscent of Darth Vader's. Another thing that I enjoyed about this episode was how there was a lot of callbacks and references to some very familiar things in Star Wars, such as the astromech screaming like R2-D2, the stormtroopers, the star destroyers, Kari's X-Wing, and the twin sons at the end. The animation in this one was spectacular as well. The duel in space between Am and Kari threw me for a loop during my first sitting of this episode, and I still think about it when watching it, so that knocks the episode down on my rankings, but all in all, it was a solid episode. Moving along, coming in at number 5, I've got La Pinocho, which was created by Gino Studio. This episode was the saddest of the bunch by far. It's about a girl named Lop that's adopted into a powerful Yakuza clan, who we learn were given a lightsaber from a Jedi many, many years ago to protect and pass down generation to generation. Lop's adopted sister, Ocho, eventually joins the Empire, believing it's the best thing for her to do to protect her planet it, culminating in a duel between Ocho and her father, Yasuboro, and then Lop. It's a fantastic episode that felt like a roller coaster ride of emotions. I absolutely love this scene when Yasuboro is passing on the clan lightsaber to Lop and explains to her the Yasuboro clan history. The animation in this episode is absolutely beautiful, which makes sense since it was hand drawn and is not digital animation. I also like that this episode didn't end with a happy ending. While it's implied that Lop and Ocho will reconcile, we don't know what will happen to them 
them, and I think that's pretty rad. Not everything in life always works out. I think it's great when storytellers are able to effectively create stories that don't have happy endings, and Gino Studio did just that. Next up at number 4, The Elder, created by Trigger. This episode was baller as hell. It's about two Jedi, a master named Tajin, and his Padawan named Dan, who travel to the Outer Rim planet Habo when Tajin feels a disturbance in the Force. As the Jedi investigate the disturbance, they come upon an old, dark lord that was once a Sith. Both Dan and Tajin fight the Elder, with Tajin eventually defeating him, and the duels in the episode were really great. Additionally, I love that the Elder's design just oozes pure evil. When the Elder is defeated by Tajin, we see him turn into Ash. My interpretation of this was that it's the opposite of what happens to a Jedi that becomes one with the Force, so a Dark Lord just turns into Soot and Ash to mirror their essence in the Force. It could also be a callback to the Rising Storm. There's also the theme of mentorship, passing knowledge down, and the idea that the next generation will surpass its predecessor in strength and knowledge, continuing an everlasting growth throughout the galaxy. That's a quintessential theme in Star Wars that we've seen, so it was great seeing that in this episode. I mentioned this in my review for the season, but the youngling in me was super excited when I learned that I shared the same name with a Jedi. There's no doubt in my mind that Jedi Padawan Dan would have been my favorite Star Wars character if Visions came out when I was a youngster. Lastly, although none of these shorts are canon, I have some thoughts on when the Elder might be taking place in the Star Wars timeline, which I'll be discussing in a future video, so make sure to check that out when it drops. Moving on to my top three. At number three, we've got Kinema Citrus's The Village Bride, which is about a young girl that's volunteered herself to be taken by a raider as a form of compliance, all while a Jedi, who was called to the planet, builds the courage to help. The Village Bride is a beautiful short film in so many ways and not just visually. The art, the story, and music of this episode were magnificent, and I also enjoyed the theme of harmony with nature in it, as well as the theme of reconciling one's past and the demons that might haunt them, which is something that the Jedi, who simply called F, deals with in the episode. The music in this short was hypnotizing from start to finish, and kept me enthralled the entire time. In addition, the mask that F wears in the episode is so baller. Give me more Jedi that look like badasses, please. But on a more deeper level, I like that her mask is used to hide her Jedi identity, while also serving as a tool to show that she's not yet come to grips with her past and what happened to her master. As the story progresses, we slowly start to see more and more of her face, and then by the end, as she's coming to grips with who she is and the death of her master, we see her without her mask, fully revealing her face, letting us know that she's begun the process of healing from her master's death and is ready to be herself and face her demons. Also, her heels are dope, and I thought it was cool how she put it into, like, sport mode when she attacked the villain. So damn cool. In addition, her lightsaber was just awesome looking, and I like that we got to see some B1 battle droids from the Clone Wars. All in all, this episode was magnificent from start to finish. Continuing on at number 2 is The Duel. This is the episode that I thought would be my favorite going into the season, and while it's not my number one choice, it did not disappoint. Created by Kamikaze Doga, the episode is about a group of bandits led by one of the most ballin' looking Sith that attack a village before a lone Ronin Sith thwarts the attack. The animation, tone, and style of this episode felt very much like an homage to old samurai films and Kurosawa films, and I think that Kamikaze Doga knocked it out of the park. On top of that, the duel takes the cake for coolest lightsaber design of all time. I mean, how cool is the Sith Bandit Leader's umbrella-esque lightsaber that can twirl and deflect blaster bolts while still being able to be used as a conventional lightsaber? It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen in any Star Wars story. I also love that at one point, when the Sith Bandit Leader is introduced, the music is very reminiscent of Enfys Ness' theme in Solo, and once her duel with Ronan begins, the music is a combination of that Enfys Ness type song coupled with what sounds like Duel of the Fates from The Phantom Menace. Just pure genius. And the duel between Ronan and the Sith Bandit leader lived up to the episode's name as well. Just an all-around fantastic duel and a stellar episode. I initially didn't realize that the Ronan is Sith, even though he has a red-bladed lightsaber. Since he kinda acts honorable throughout the episode, but the behind the scenes for the episode revealed that Ronan is in fact a Sith, even though he doesn't care about money, but rather kyber crystals, which is why we see he has a collection of them. So sick. The duel is an incredible short, and I can't wait for the Ronan novel to come out and get a continuation of his story. And finally, my favorite episode of Vision Season 1 is Production IG's The Ninth Jedi. There is so much to love about this episode. This short is about the ruler of the Outer Rim planet of High Islan, Margrave Jiro, who has 
summon Jedi from across the war-torn galaxy to provide them with lightsabers which have long since disappeared from the galaxy hoping to restore the Jedi Order. Everything about this episode was incredible. The story, the art, and the music were superb and I loved how my expectations were subverted. I also loved the design of Margrave Juro, who's hands down the coolest looking Jedi of all time. I really enjoyed how the episode subverts our idea of how heroes and villains should look. For most of the episode, we're left wondering if Juro, an unknown character that looks very Sith-like, can be trusted while a group of supposed Jedi, all of which look very much like heroes, are Sith acolytes and are actually the villains of the story. It's not until Kara arrives with her father's lightsabers where we learn that these supposed Jedi are actually acolytes of the Sith since the lightsaber blades turn red when they ignite them. I'd love to know your thoughts on Juro's design so let me know what you thought about Juro's look down in the comments below. In addition to Juro looking like a total badass, the lightsabers and fight scenes in this episode were so damn dope. I mean how cool looking was Kara's lightsaber. Her dark muted green lightsaber blade was so freaking cool and I love that it eventually turned into a full green blade as the episode progressed and her strength in the force grew. I also love that right as her lightsaber turns green, her opponent's lightsaber fades from red to purple as the Sith's influence over them has faded. The unsung hero award of the episode though goes to the grumpy old pilot droid that was sipping a drink and didn't want to be bothered while on its break. So damn good. One other thing I really enjoyed in The Ninth Jedi was when Kara is being chased on her speeder. That scene totally reminded me of the speeder chase scene in Return of the Jedi, which I loved. And there you have it guys, that's my episode rankings for the entire first season of Visions. Star Wars Visions completely surpassed my expectations, was fun and entertaining, and provided some truly remarkable Star Wars stories. It left me truly blown away by the end. I'm hoping we haven't seen the last of this magnificent show and that this is just the first season of many more to come. But what's your thoughts on Star Wars Visions? And what's your Visions episode rankings? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, please help out the channel by hitting that like button and making sure you subscribe. Follow the channel on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at SW Transmissions. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.